after the, the training in the hyperbolic time chamber and then Cell dies. I miss everything in between. <laughs> so I'm like, why is Gohan a man? Oh. And a second thought, what are you doing here? Uh, anyway, that's either here nor there. We're going to have Kofi going up against Vivi. All right, so this is a matchup that doesn't happen too often uh, at home, but at Xeno, um, thanks to the likes of Tilde, there's plenty of practice for Falco to go around. So we'll see how well Vivi is able to pilot around the space he is. Things start off on Stadium 2. Yeah, as, as Bao would put it, uh, how well Vivi can handle getting out of the Falco Cinematic Universe uh, will definitely be a, uh, be a huge factor for him here. Because Falco, low, it's, I still think he's a criminally slept on character. His character has so many... You know, crazy combo resets and juggling, you know, tools at his disposal. With that up tilt especially. But uh, counter don't give a hoot about your up tilt. It was, it was a good double team. It was a good one. <laughs> I like how <laughs> Vivi picked option C out of the cutscene. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, the jo like the joke answer worked the best. Yeah. <laughs> when in doubt, see it out, baby. All right. So now he now now Kofi's at the point where he, you don't want to be. You don't want to be treading water against Lucario. Because then he can do stuff like this, where the where the aura sphere starts making the whoosh noise and everything starts getting really scary. Yeah, once it's the whoosh is where now it's a matter of no one wanting to participate with anyone. Because Vivi <laughs> doesn't want to get in the cutscene, he'll lose his stock at this point. Because the cutscene's very short. In fact, it was just a loading screen that time. That was a great that was fantastic reaction time on display right there from Kofi. Like, to, to call out the Aura Sphere is one thing, but also to have to wear it all to go for the Reflector, knowing if you miss, you're probably going to eat a crap ton of damage. Yeah, that's, that's OD damage at that level of charge. But nonetheless, things looking at a dead even right now. Lucario, not nearly as scary until you're up a bit of damage, but that's exactly what's going to happen as Kofi begins a combo. And nice little 42 and a half percent uh, from Kofi. All set up uh, from that falling fair into the ground, which is a huge tool for Falco, uh, you know, in all of his matchups. Yeah, not only is itself a good combo piece and occasionally a good under a combo, but most people don't realize when you're using the pressure on shield that hitbox lingers as he lands. I like to tell people that Falco like takes oh. a bite with his beak. But <laughs> right now it's Lucario taking a much larger bite as Vivi takes a pretty strong lead. Oh yeah, without a doubt. So Vivi, again, just the thing about Lucario is that you just you should never feel like at any point that you're gonna lose the set. Like you have to be a little bit of a masochist to like master this character. Because like, you have to be completely comfortable just like losing a lot of these neutral exchanges, but for the greater good. A nice little combo right there. Once again, the, the fair drag down and continue to juggle trap uh, from Kofi. That was just unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. Caught slipping, jumping from the ledge. That's exactly what's going to happen. And once again, things even themselves fairly well. I like how Kofi's taking a lot more of a passive approach to the beginning of these stocks, trying to opt for the laser pressure. Just nickel and dime the damage on because he doesn't want to take too much damage. Otherwise, once the battle starts to raise as far as percentages are concerned, it's Vivi who's going to be sitting far further in the lead. Yeah, without a doubt. So let's see what the response is here uh, You know, from Kofi. He's losing, a f he's losing a fair bit. Like, it's not something that Kifako can't easily make up, but Vivi's doing a good job just, like, avoiding a lot of these, like, super heavy strings from Falco. Oh. I'm very surprised <laughs> it did not hit him, to be honest. It didn't hit Falco, but it definitely hit Kofi if you're looking <laughs> at the player cam. <laughs> They're really fishing for it now. But to be honest with you, I don't blame him. Like, it's got plenty of power behind it, and you don't want Kofi living any longer than he already is. No, absolutely, especially with the the, the oomph behind what Falco's uh, meteor hitboxes can do. Great reset on the grab right there. Ooh, and there we go. The back air will connect. And Team Aeon starting off the win. So that was really nice stuff right there from Kofi. That air dodge, of course, going to be the demise. Um, for Vivi. And again, that's all it takes, man. It just takes a couple of wins in neutral because Falco can delete socks. This character, is, I still feel like it's so criminally underrated. He's super good. Like, just look at the Tristan area. Besides Kofi, we also have Juice, both players who do phenomenally with the character. Yeah. I love Falco. Falco's one of my favorite Smash characters of all time. I just like birds. Birds are cool. Birds are indeed cool. I can co-sign this. <laughs> but... As far as birds go, we're moving from bird bird to bird people. Uh, Zero Suit Samus is stepping up to bat. Potentially trainer. <laughs> uh, no, potentially, yeah. And going up against him is PK Chris, the Nest main, uh, from Long Island. You know, there's going to come a day where Chris is going to move on from Ness. And <laughs> he's just Chris. He, yeah, I don't think he's going to change his tag, so he'll still be PK Chris. Just but saying, my tag's Koopa. I. Awesome. You, you eventually got to out. Yeah, you know, yeah, it took me a few years, but I eventually did. Uh, you're also very true, though. For four years, though, I was Koopa the Sonic, and everyone's like, wait a second. 
Because I couldn't name myself like, you know, Bad Nick the Mario main. Like, that would have been weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I think the worst was um, Sea Falcon. He's a player from down south. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he plays Palutena now. He played Rosalina in Smash 4. <laughs> See where this is going? You know what? Something's off here. <laughs> There's um, Space Mario, who plays Piranha Plant. Yes, yes. Very true. I'm trying to think. There's like tons of other examples. Of this. Dude, there's so, so many of them. It's like, I get it. Best guess whenever he plays Palutena. True. To his credit, though, he's getting good results with Ness and is making a good stance for being the best Ness. So, like, he's at least fitting to and his He's not role. already there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway, that's either in here nor there. It is going to be Pokemon Trainer going up against Ness. So, here we go, folks. Bankai versus PK Chris. Now, matchups for boys, I feel like Chris should have this. Across all of the Pokemon, I feel like Chris uh, has great tools for at least pressuring to the ledge. And Trainer becomes a lot more trivialized once he has to try and come off the ledge. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I think because of the space that he's going to be able to cover, like, just because I'm just looking at how Chris is already, like, moving. Like, he's, he's definitely really good at closing the space uh, you know, in front of Bankai. And I was, oh, my God. I shouldn't have made such a hard FUD. <laughs> What's he packing in those leaves? <laughs> that, that's a dense leaf. That's like an, like an, an autumn day after it rains, like, clump of leaves. <laughs> yeah, right now, Bankai already on the back foot right now. Oh, my God. Take note about how Chris is standing right on top of Bankai. Regardless of if it was Squirtle or Ivysaur, during that first stock, Bankai was not able to break away from Chris's pressure. And now, sitting on Charizard, I feel like he's going to have a better time as far as the boxing tools are concerned, but it's a bigger target now. Sure, absolutely. Okay. Oh, my God. I don't, I don't know if he got nicked by the last hit of the magnet right there or if it was the last hit of forward air. But regardless, though, Chris is able to keep this reset on. Jeez. He's just looking to rack up the damage, and he's doing a phenomenal job of it. Not able to catch Bankai off the ledge yet, but Bankai has not had a chance to really land on the stage to his own call. It's really just been that back air that gets him a little bit of room to breathe. Ooh, okay, avoiding the forward smash right there from Ivysaur, but Bankai still having a world of damage to make up right now. Charizard still not getting the stock that he needs. Oh, but tries to go for the grab out of shield. Not a good option. And Chris surviving as he's now managed to Ooh. completely lap Bankai and wow. bonk him on the head with the yo-yo. That was crazy. So now Bankai having two stocks to make up right now. Very nice recovery there for PK Chris, slightly delaying uh, the PK Thunder, uh, too, to kind of just mess up Bankai's timing. That should be... Yeah, yeah that's up throw, and that's very dead, especially off the plot as Bankai tries to build things back up. However, that's a full stock lead ahead that Chris is sitting. And you know he's just going to go right back to his game plan of standing right on top of his opponent. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Because that's where he's been making his money right there. Like, if I, if Pokemon Trainer has a time to, like, or the space to set up and hit you with stuff, because, like, a lot of these aerials are, are relatively slow, like, despite the fact how strong they are when they hit you. It's, so he's doing a really good job just kind of hanging out in that, like, you know, that danger zone right there because Ness is super quick in the air. At the very least, Bankai is doing a better job now of at least putting like, the damage to Chris, which will make his job easier as he eventually scales his way <laughs> towards <laughs> getting himself to an even game. An excellent catch with the Vine Whip. All right, so now the ball is still firm. You know, not as firmly in PK Chris's corner, but, you know, Bankai is at least keeping it respectable. Okay. All right. Potential last play here with Charizard. His Flare Bliss is from out deep. Still manages to return to the stage without a worry. Yeah, thankfully PK Chris was committed to that uh, PK uh, flash right there. Is he dead? Okay, just kidding. Although Nair catching the roll, and once again, PK fire. Oh, and rising Nair yep. catching the head once again, and just like that, Chris cleaning up Bankai and keeping the lead in favor of Aeon. Yeah, man. Uh, that was a just a rough draw right there from Bankai. Uh, he was he SDI'd out of the PK fire, and because of how low he was without any resources, he was forced to recover past the ledge in order to grab it, and PK Chris is right there to sniff around into neutral air. So very, very nice stuff. So Team Aeon going up two to Nada, and now we're going to have the battle of last-second replacements. <laughs> with Ralphie stepping in for Team Xeno and DeBuzz stepping in for Team Aeon. You know, for fifth seeds, these guys aren't bad. <laughs> no, not at all. By any stretch of the imagination, not at all. Um, How did we come to this? <laughs> perfectly balanced. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's there. So it's gonna, probably going to be Wolf versus... Uh, Wolf versus Omar. Per, uh, actually, I could see the Rosalina coming out. Presuming that players are not character locked throughout the entire Swiss format, and just within their, their match, I could see Rosalina coming out for fighting the Spacey. <laughs> yeah, I don't definitely want to see it as a bad matchup. Like, I think... Be, Rosalina, even though she's like you know not the same ilk of character she was in the past iteration of Smash, she still has a lot of the same like kind of uh, janky like tools on certain characters, like very linear recoveries and stuff like that. Like you look at with uh, Debuzz is convinced that she has the sauce. He hasn't disclosed how much sauce or how spicy the sauce is, <laughs> but Rosalina is in firm hold of sauce. She has it. We just don't know what type yet. So that's everybody getting their stuff set. So if Ralphie wins, we keep going. If the Buzz wins, then they can choose to play out the set or not. But at that point, Team Aeon will have secured the uh, the victory. So yeah, and I believe two victories through uh, through round play is enough to make it into the bracket play that is the advancing format for Swiss. I believe so. Yes. So Swiss, I think Swiss is Swiss a little complicated. It, it's a little complicated. It's you definitely come from a more. You definitely look like you come from a. Or understand how to, because TCGs, I believe, use Swiss as their, as their yeah. format. Yeah, so. Swiss format is a lot more traditional towards uh, towards other forms of gaming. This matchup, though, not traditional for uh, our That's Cloud Strife for Final Fantasy VII. Ooh, this is, we're looking at a run back. Looking like a, <laughs> this, we're turning into way back. What, what year is it, Frank? <laughs> we're starting Smashville. We're looking at Olimar. We're looking at Cloud. But uh, I don't see a Wii U in sight. <laughs> And that platform's not losing. And we're also... Uh, never mind. I was going to make another <laughs> poor joke, but it's fine. Uh, needs to say, though, I... You know what? I still feel like Cloud is another one of those, like, kind of uh, slept-on commodities. Like, I definitely think this character's still very good. Um, just not as, you know, meta-defining and broken as he was in the last game. He's dead. See, the things that separated Cloud I, from the pack in Smash 4 that made him such a defining character are part of the course for a lot of characters in this game. He has amazing aerial movement. He has great moving options on the ground as well. He has decent combo tools. All of these things are fairly commonplace in Ultimate, so Cloud running the middle of the pack, he's still a good character, and in certain matchups, he's still able to zone break very well through the likes of his bear, his fair, his nair. They're just great tools. Yeah, things are definitely going to be interesting uh, in regards to approaching for Ralphie in this matchup. Like, Cloud only really has, like, two, like... Fairly good, like con consistent approach options would be like fair or like uh, you know back air because neutral air's hitbox has been neutered. Wow. Yeah. You know it's funny too. All that change for Nair was they changed the animation and Cloud now bends his arm. <laughs> he doesn't like let it swing. It's a heavy. It's a heavy sword, man. It is. Ooh, nice back air. Says too the heavy commentator. for the boys. But that up smash is going to be just as heavy on his end, and now Ralphie. You know, stuck in disadvantage against uh, the Buzz, but able to down air his way through. Something still stay true. You ever hold a hearty radish, Koopa? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Cannot say I have. When you hold a hearty radish, you really feel like you could just beat the money out of someone. <laughs> I feel like that's what the Buzz plays like when he's got multiple purple Pikmin. He, he plays like someone who's willing to rob you outside the venue <laughs> with <laughs> produce. <laughs> Right, but now the buzz having the super heavy offense line up. Right Two right. purples? It's on site. I'm saying. I, I'm terrified of this Pikmin lineup right now. Yeah, yellow are actually going to serve to do some decent for shield pressure at lower percentages. And then while purple's fine and dandy for the damage itself, not super integral to an early combo game, definitely better for coming off the ledge, which every character can always use more of when fighting the likes of Cloud. As his ledge traffic's still oh. pretty strong. Okay, so the Buzz going for the home run swing right there, but coming up short. That cross slash just missing its mark for Ralphie. There you go, down air, just unfortunately not gonna be enough right there. And the Buzz out to the recover high. He might be dead here. I think he jumped. Yeah, he's, the, the kill squad is here. That's a very dead Ralphie. And just like that, 3 0 score count in favor of Team Aeon. So good on the Long Island boys for coming back from. The devastating beating that Spectrum delivered to them in the previous match was on stream. Sure. And it seems that Team Xeno is opting to play out the set, I think. No, um, it looks like they're... Uh, no, there's, there's some fist bumps.